Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and we are going to color a spinning windmill today. And I am drawing my own spinning windmill because I did not get the dies that go with this set. And when I bought it, I was just thinking, oh, this windmill is all together, and I thought the blades were going to be on it, but they weren't, which gave me the idea to draw it so it has motion to it. And if you want to get the dies, or if you just want to cut out your own, cutting out that X shape is not hard. And you can cut out your own and put it on with a brad and spin it yourself. But I'm going to color it so it looks like it's been spinning and it's moving around. So I'm starting by putting the ink on it, and I'm using Copic markers, so I'm using a Copic friendly ink. And then I'm wiping off one panel of it, one side of it, and you can see sort of what I've done. It, it's just part of it, and I'm going to make those look like they're moving. I turned it a little bit. I didn't turn it exactly perfectly even because perfectly even is not going to look right. It's going to look too contrived. And I did the same thing. And then I masked out a little bit of those so that my house was going to actually not block off the, the spinning windmill portion, the little house for the windmill. And I wiped off part of the top of it because, yeah. <laughs> I uh, used my eclipse tape to make a mask and then I could stamp all my little trees next to my house. There's uh, single trees and pairs of trees and stuff. You can make a whole tree line out of them. And then we are ready to color. I'm going to start by making my first four blades the main ones. And what I mean by the main ones is I want it to feel like an X. So I want to have four of them that are going to look like they're a little darker, a little heavier, and then the other four will look like shadows or the, the ones in between, the motion ones. And I want them all to look like they're in motion, but I want four of them to look like they're a little more solid. So I have a little darker color on them, and then each one of these others I'm going to add lighter color to. And then start making motion lines. And look how nice these work, just little flick marks and they start to look like they're moving in space. I am going to add more to these as I get a little further on in here, um, but I want to let these dry for the time being because I want to do something that I don't want to get mushy with, so I, want, I don't want wet ink on the paper when I start working on the next phase. So the roof, I need to look like it's transparent too, so I'm using two colors, so I, I kind of look like I have some lighter color going on where the blades are spinning in front. And I'll use that same uh, color to make some grout for the stones. I wanted to make a stone little house for my windmill. And I'm just using blobs of color. It doesn't matter what colors, just pick some grays. I'm using some, some greens, a YG91, a warm gray, a cool gray, and I'm even going to throw some purple in here. You can do any kind of colors you want. I did a stone bridge recently. And it was so much fun to do it with pinks and blues and all kinds of crazy colors, and it still looked wonderful. And for the shadow underneath each one, I'm using a C7. It might freak you out, might be too much. Use a lighter color if you wish. And I'm just making a little C underneath, underneath each one of the stones. And then I will add a little bit of C4 to just blend that so that it's not so garish, because it came out a little bit strong, and I didn't want it to totally take over. And then I get out a white pen, whatever white gel pen or sharpie white pen that you have that you want to use, and put just a little dot of highlight on the top. Almost, I'm doing kind of a, an apostrophe or reverse apostrophe shape. And now I'm going to color in my door. I want my door to be nice and dark. I'll add some wood texture to it in a little bit. But I want the door to also get lighter up in that corner. So I'm going to switch colors in that corner because that's where the blades are going to go over. Now when I looked up windmills, Dutch windmills, on the interwebs, they have grids. They are made of grids. They're not solid blades like your ceiling fan. I don't know how that works scientifically. It seems like too much wind would go past them and not move them, but there you go. So I'm using one marker that had a the little bullet nib in it that I've changed out. And this one, I'm just using my chisel nib, but I'm using the edge of it to make skinny lines. So if you have trouble getting your Copic brush nib to make skinny lines, use your chisel nib, because that sometimes will work. The rest of this, I'm just going to start throwing some color in. I'm going to color up my trees. The focal point of this is the spinning blades of the windmill. 
So the rest of it, you could kind of let things go. Don't worry about blending so much. As I say in many of my videos, pay attention to the most important part, the thing that people are going to look at the most and spend your time on that. And the windmill, the, the spinning blades on the windmill and the stones, I think really set it off. So these trees in the background are kind of wah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Just grabbing some greens to blend them with. I'm going to throw some grass in down here, but I have a plan for the bottom half of the card that is going to uh, take on a whole different flavor. For my texture, for the the wood in the, the door, I used a really dark brown to draw some lines in and then going over it with the E37 again to kind of pull it all together and make it nice rich dark wood and I'm just gonna throw in some scribbled trees here in the background just very light little marks of a tree line back there and then I wanted my grass to get a little bit darker so I put a shadow under those trees and then I'm just gonna continue this because I'm gonna cover up most of that with a little surprise panel that I'm gonna add to the card and one little last bit of strong contrast underneath that roof and do the windows and we're ready to go on that panel this is the other panel this is the one that i was thinking about there's lots of flowers in the stamp set and i decided i want to use them i like to use all the stamps so i made a row of them and i used a piece of tape to block it off with a piece of masking tape and just stamped them so that they kind of stopped at that line and put my sentiment on there, colored the green behind it. And, and I'm just going to make that a panel that's going to be popped in front of the card. But all I have to do is fussy cut around it. I'm not fussy cutting every flower. I'm leaving a little line. And I decided later I was going to use a darker green. So I went in with my YG95 instead so that I get something that matches a little bit better. It doesn't have that real bright look. But look how beautiful that is with that dimension added on that bottom panel. Just really interesting to, to try doing that sometimes and giving yourself some dimension to add interest to the card instead of stamping the things directly on the scene. So that's my card for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the video. Click like if you did. And if you didn't, then go watch a different video and don't bother marking anything on this one. I will talk to you guys later. I've got another video coming up in a couple of days, and I will see you then. Have a really great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.